All right, hey guys, and welcome back to another video. This is episode three of Price Check, my new series where I take a look at current trends in the retro video game collecting market and offer my insights into certain games that I pick and you guys pick as well in terms of do I think the games are going to stay the same in price, go up, or maybe even come down. So let's not waste any time. As I mentioned in the last video, I will be picking a comment every Price Check episode where you suggest a game for me to cover, and I will cover it. And the one I picked for this episode is from David Knight. He suggested that I take a look at Kingsfield, the Ancient City, on the PlayStation 2. It also seems like quite a few of you wanted me to take a look at this one, so let's jump right into it. So the first notable thing about Kingsfield is that, first of all, it is developed by From Software, okay? You all know From Software by now, I'm sure, the Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and now even more hype is being drummed up around the final, you know, finally we have the trailer for Elden Ring. So I think universally From Software games are going to be impacted by this as we get closer to Elden Ring. And Kingsfield, the ancient city, is not the first game in the series if you're not familiar with it there's been a few of them on the playstation one one of which was exclusive to japan um and then two we got in the u.s on the playstation one and then this was the only one that came out on the playstation two and it's still kind of under the radar this is a game that not a lot of people are talking about and i think as we draw closer to elden rings release as you know hype starts drumming up around the from software's history and people start looking into their back catalog to get prepared for Elden Ring, I think you're going to see a lot of new people coming into the Kingsfield series, whether or not they choose to start with the first games on the PlayStation 1 or they jump right into this one because it looks a little bit more modernized. I, I can't say for sure, but I do think you're going to see a huge renewed interest in this game. And first of all, if we take a look at the price charting history here, uh, this game used to be about 30 bucks, and it saw a huge spike at the start of 2020 once again you know as most games did for various reasons however a lot of games didn't straight up double in price some games saw maybe 25 percent 40 percent 50 percent increase but to see a more than double price spike on this it means that yeah there's there's attention being drawn to this game and i do feel like in the future uh more and more people are going to be jumping on to not just the kingsfield series but from software developed games in general and when they're a bit limited in supply like this game is uh, first of all this is a first person dungeon crawler very dark very difficult from what i've been told it's a game that i've been wanting to jump into for quite some time now and i do think the prices for this all things considered uh, are still quite reasonable believe it or not when it comes to exclusive ps2 rpgs i think this is still in the realm of uh you know still in the realm of affordability because let's face it there's a lot of ps2 rpgs out there that are getting ridiculous so if we t take a look at the current landscape of what's available, there's there's a good handful of copies that are that are kind of around the current market prices, which is which is good, right? It's not completely dried up. But if we take a look at what's selling, this is always very telling. Uh, oh, <laughs> that rhymes. I didn't I didn't mean for that. Uh, we can get a better sense for how frequent this is selling and what the, the average price is. The average price that price charting is telling us right now is about 70, and that seems to be about right. However, we just took a look. A lot of the copies that are up for sale now are a little bit more than 70. Um, so we could see this trending upwards quite soon. But yeah, it seems like right on the money, 65 to $70 is the average price. And if you do notice here, there are a lot of copies that have been selling. This is not an exceedingly rare game, but it's definitely in the upper realm of being uncommon. Uh, is this the type of game that you need to panic buy right now? No, I don't think you need to panic buy this right now because we're still a very long ways out from Elden Ring. But I think once we get to within that realm where Elden Ring will be coming out within three months or so, you probably want to try and get your copy before that. But you got some time, wait it out, you know, check Amazon, check, uh, check eBay, check Mercari, and just keep your eyes out for the average price of a $65, $70 copy. How much will this go up? That's hard to say. PS2 RPGs can climb really quickly, so use your use your best judgment on that. Alrighty, so we're going to be jumping into Patreon requests, uh, and once again, you can join my Patreon and request games for me every month to check out on this series, and we're going to be checking out um, the first request from Sai of Boredom. He has three requests for me, and the first game we're going to be starting with is Kirby Air Ride on the GameCube. So, Kirby Air Ride, once again, a game that I have not played, and I, I have been meaning to do this for a long time. I am familiar with Kirby Air Ride. I've actually watched quite a few speedruns of this game. Uh, and it's uh, it's in a unique space for the Kirby series in that, well, it's really the only Kirby racing game out there in a traditional sense. And it has been gaining 
hugely in price since the beginning of 2020. Once again, another example where, you know, this game used to be under 30 bucks and now it is upwards of nearly $90. So this is this is almost a 200% price increase. So let's take a look. I think it's important for this one. Let's take a look at according to price charting, average price right now is $80, but two sales per day. So here's the thing about Kirby, right? Apparently a very cult classic for a lot of people. There's a lot of fans for this game. It's very stylish. It's very flashy. However, if we take a look, this is a very common game, right? Not only is it common, but it also has a player's choice version, which means that this game sold a lot. There's a lot of player's choice out there. And if you look at eBay right now, according to the listings, you know, of course, some of them are disc only case. So, you know, um, let's just say here that there's about 100 copies available of Kirby's Air Ride right now. That is a lot. This game will never be scarce. It will never run out of copies available for sale. Uh, this is always going to be available, and I think that's important to take into mind when it comes to trying to gauge what is going to happen to the future of games. Now, if there were 10, 15 copies of Kirby up here right now, I'd say, okay, maybe that's cause of concern. Let's take a look at what this is selling for right now. Um, so we're just sorting by most recent, and as we can see, it's still kind of selling for around the average price that price charting is recommending to us. So I, I do think that this was a product of the early 2020 um, rush of people trying to get games that were nostalgic to them as they were sitting, sitting at home, and I think Kirby's Arid was definitely one of those games. It seems like a good multiplayer game, so people were picking it up and getting all nostalgic for it. And of course, as we know, GameCube games are, you know, they have seen a drastic increase in price. But I, I do think that we have seen Kirby hit its pinnacle. I, I don't see this going up too much more, uh, especially because this seems almost kind of ripe for a remaster at some point in the future, right? Like, I'm sure Nintendo knows that there's a lot of fans for Kirby Air Ride. Potentially, we can see something eventually, which would certainly bring down the price of the GameCube version. But I do think there's so many copies of this available that uh, this is not going to keep going up in price. I can see this stabilizing at what it's at right now, or potentially even coming down a little bit by maybe 10 or 15 bucks on average within a year's time, because there just are so many of them. So... If you're concerned about this game going up, don't worry about it. There's plenty. I think this is one of those instances where you may see a slight decrease in price uh, towards the end of 2021, start of 2022. All right. The next request uh, from Sai of Boredom is Metroid Samus Returns. And this is actually a really interesting one to take a look at right now. Um, because, well... We just saw the news of Metroid Dread, right? So this would this would be the time, if Metroid games were going to go up in price, this would be the time to see that increase because of the hype of Metroid Dread. So the first thing that I noticed, and this is always very telling when it comes to trying to judge the current price and future price of a game, is is there a is there a bulk seller selling this essentially in high volumes, right? So we see this listing here. 277 sold we don't know how many they have more than 10 available so we can imagine maybe they have a couple hundred more you don't really know this is the scary part right when you have a seller on ebay that has a huge bulk of it i'm sure nintendo still has a huge bulk of this themselves to sell uh it seems like it is in no shortage oh more than 53 percent sold so yeah they still have about 200 250 copies of this left I don't think you're going to see anything, any kind of crazy movement in, in Samus Returns. If this is kind of the, the price that this has been selling for for quite a while, $46 for a brand new copy, and if Nintendo seems like, who knows, I don't know if they're still reprinting 3DS games at this point, but it seems like there's so many of these in circulation at the moment, I don't think you'd see any movement in price on this in a couple years, year and a half, two years, right? There just seems to be so many of them out there. Granted, most of them are all sealed. People aren't really selling used copies because, well, you know, it, it just seems like the kind of game where Metroid fans would probably hold on to it and keep it. And, you know, sealed copies are so cheap, are they really going to want to take a hit on selling the, the, the cheaper used copy? Uh, let's just really quickly, though, take a look at selling prices, what people have been paying for this. All right, so we can see here, obviously, a lot of people have been picking this up recently out of the hype of Metroid Dread's announcement, uh, many copies selling per day, some of which I, I'm really just kind of blown away why somebody would spend $51 on just the cart when they can buy a brand new copy for $46, but hey, some people, I guess, 
they don't care. They're in a rush to like, oh, I, I don't know. I, sometimes I question the things that people spend on here for, for certain uh, completeness of games. But yeah, I don't think you have to worry about this. I think if eventually the stock on eBay gets dried up, then maybe you'd see an, a price increase as we get closer to the recent Metroid Dread. But uh, this is going to stay the same. I don't see any increase on this. All right. The last uh, request from uh, Sai is a very interesting one. And this, this is going to be quite oh that's the that's the wrong one there we go this is going to be quite the one to delve into now he has specifically requested the greatest hits version of toy story 2 now the game is so rare that from what i can find price charting does not even have a page for the greatest hits version of this game because it pops up so infrequently so we are currently looking at the black label prices and as you can see this game used to be dirt cheap a personal favorite game of my childhood uh, i played the playstation 1 version as well and love this it's such a great 3d action platformer and it's seen about a 100 percent price increase over time not too drastic right nothing crazy because there are tons of this game out there in circulation the latest prices are definitely around the 25 dollars range but that is very reasonable for this game it's a great game first of all you should definitely check it out if you're a fan you don't even have to be a fan of toy story if you're just a fan of 3d platformers in general check out toy story 2. however the one he wants me to take a look at is the greatest hits version and yes if you are not aware of the greatest hits version of toy story 2 it is by far one of the rarest games on the platform for the playstation 1. Uh, the, the only copy that is currently up for sale that I could see is $600 asking price. Now, I haven't been keeping up with the market value on this and what they're actually selling for as of late. And I believe if we check recently sold, I don't think we're going to get any results. Let's see. Uh, nothing. Yeah, the game is extremely, extremely rare. So why is this? Well, first of all, this came out uh, less than a year I think 10 or 11 months um what is happening here 10 or 11 months uh, before the release of the playstation 2 so that right there trying to get back to the regular page that right there is this is this is a pretty late playstation 1 release all things considered yes the playstation 1 had releases years after the fact but this this was leading up to right before people were getting ready to move on to the, the playstation 2 we were pretty close now there's an interesting history behind this game and I, i'm not really sure if there are any theories out there as to why this had such a low print run compared to other greatest hits releases but if you do a little just a little bit of research into it there was a bit of a controversy behind one of the characters in the original black label release that actually prompted a, a little protest outside of the uh the developers studio peaceful protest uh, to get them to change this character that was in the game you know change the look of them remove it from the game so they actually did that in the greatest hits release they swapped out the character to to make everybody happy and they put that in the greatest hits version of this game as well as the pc version now maybe it could be theorized that they they did this greatest hits release again to get this updated version out there to get rid of the controversy and then just close the door on it right they they did it in a small print run an extremely small print run just so that they can say look we've taken steps to remove this character from our game um and here's the greatest hits version he's it's the characters removed right and they had no intention of ever really continuing to print copies of this because they probably saw the sales were dwindling and they were getting ready to move on to the playstation 2 release so they kind of just did this as a press release kind of thing for for the people that were aware of the controversial character in this game do your own research into it by the way i'm not going to get too too deep into it so that maybe that's maybe that's a way to look at it i'm not really sure but i do think because it was on the eve of the within a year's time of the ps2 really limited release of the greatest hits version um for whatever reasons right we i'm sure we've never really been told by them directly why it was such a short print run and we probably never will know but uh yeah so will the price on this go up um well this is only for collectors this is not this is only for first of all toy hardcore toy story fans that want every version of toy story in their collection and i can't imagine there's too many people out there that are collecting toy story games exclusively at, at least to the extent where they'd spend hundreds of dollars on a greatest hits release but this is also only for collectors that are go either going for a complete playstation one library which good luck that's insane or collectors that are going for a more feasible collecting goal of every greatest hits release 
Keep in mind that is also extremely difficult to do. There's quite a lot of greatest hits, and some of them are very expensive, like this one in NFL Blitz. So it's really for a very, very small market of retro game collectors, and the fact that this one is sitting here right now unsold tells me that I think their desires are satiated for now. I think the hardcore collectors that have been wanting this for their collection have probably already snatched it up, and it's just going to take another hardcore collector that's like, I'm going to go for every Greatest Hits game out there to come along and, and pick up a copy like this. I think collectors like that are very few and far between because normally they like to be the first one to do it, and once a few people have already accomplished that, I think the glimmer of stardom kind of fades away, right? And they're like, well, this many collectors have already done it. I can't go on and brag about this accomplishment unless you're really into the desire to have a complete greatest hits collection among a lot of other people. And I think that's the mindset that a lot of people would likely have with going for a full greatest hits collection, right? I mean, you're doing it for yourself, but let's face it, they're probably also doing it for the, the street cred, the word on the street. Hey, did you hear Bob down the street? He's got that full greatest hits PS1 collection. And, you know, there, I'm sure there's a lot of different reasons to go for it. So, will the price go up? I don't think so. I think it's going to kind of stabilize at whatever hundreds of dollars this has been selling for lately. Like I said, it's too niche. It's, it's greatest hits. People are still warming up to the idea of actually collecting greatest hits. So, that's my take on it. All right, we're going to be moving on to the next set of games. Uh, this is another Patreon request from ASMR Gaming, and the first game that he wanted me to start with is Luminous Arc, uh, a game that I have not played. In fact, uh, I had a passing interest in this when it came out, but ultimately decided to pass on it for various reasons. There were just so many DSRPGs coming out at the time, didn't have time for all of them, and this is one of the ones that I did pass on. So the first thing of note is this is published by Atlas. And if we take a look at the price history of this game, it's actually kind of been all over the place. Let's make sure we're in the completest, completest, uh, complete inbox portion of this. So wow, look at the prices here. This is very unusual for price charting. Now, I don't know the complete history of this game, right? It looks like it came out maybe with a small print run and then became really in demand. Because look at this, $60 and then, whoa, way back down to the, the $20, $30 range. And then, you know, maybe it started getting scarce again and then whoop, back up to 60 and then, oh, maybe they did like, you know, I don't know. This is, this is very unusual for a price charting uh, RPG chart. Um, but anyway, currently it's kind of stabilizing apparently around 60, 70. However, if we take a look here, there are some copies selling lately for nearly a hundred dollars or more. So prices are kind of all over the place on this. If you take a look at the price history, it's not exceedingly rare. There's several of these selling every month. So I don't think you have to worry in terms of this being like super hard to find in the future. So this is a strategy RPG, uh, very much considered like a clone of Final Fantasy Tactics and Style Tactics Advance, I guess you can say. I'm not too familiar with how the game plays, but the thing that you want to note is the developer. Sometimes in this case, developer is really important. Now, this is a defunct developer, Image Epoch, but they do have quite a few games that are well regarded by people, right? They do have their fan base. So if we take a look, Luminous Arc is the first game they released. They had three games in the series, but they also developed Sands of Destruction and Seventh Dragon. Seventh Dragon does have a pretty devoted fan base that are into those types of dungeon crawlers. Sands of Destruction, actually a pretty pretty okay little DSRPG that I've played as well that, was, uh, that spawned its own anime. Um, Arc Rise Fantasia, another kind of out there we RPG that not a lot of people are talking about. Uh, Stella Glow, I've heard a lot of people that are kind of into that game. I haven't yet to play that, however. The Criminal Girls series, another couple more Seventh Dragon games. Um, and then, of course, Time and Eternity. What, a, what an experience that is on the PlayStation 3. And then lastly, they came out with a Criminal Girls game on the Vita. So a, a nice small library of niche Japanese developed games. So I think the people that might eventually start seeking this game out maybe are looking into the back catalog from this developer or are just kind of starved for turn-based tactical RPGs. But I don't think there's any real shortage of those. There's so many of them out there. You know, why Luminous Arc above other tactical RPGs, right? This game, from what I understand, has a lot of touch controls going on with it, uh, and not a lot of people are into that really finicky, like, hey, you gotta constantly use the cut touch screen and, you know, draw stuff, or I'm not sure what the game does, but I've read reviews that said it has a heavy use of the touch screen. Not everybody's into that. So let's take a look at current prices. Asking prices for this game right now, there don't seem to be a ton of complete copies that are in that sort of $70 range, so 
prices are kind of dried up for this at the moment. There is almost nothing available. Why this is, I don't know. Was there a spotlight put on this game recently? I'm not sure. But there's almost no copies here for sale for a decent price complete. Everything is quite expensive, so... Hopefully nobody gets desperate because that uh, that won't be good for the market of this game. Be patient. This is not a rare game, okay? <laughs> if you look at price charting, it sells very often. It's just a matter of letting the market replenish itself. So let's take a look at sales of this recently. Um, there also is a limited edition with an art book, it looks like. Not a limited edition, but it, uh, it, it comes with an art book to keep that in mind. Um... It does seem like a lot of people are actually paying a hundred bucks for this. Maybe not all of these are being tracked accordingly by price charting. They're not the most accurate when it comes to tracking, especially if an, a best offer being accepted was involved. Um, there haven't been a ton of sales between May and June, and the, those that have sold have gone for a hundred dollars. Here's the thing, though. I think this is just a byproduct of people panic buying anything Atlas, especially if it's on the DS. The DS is seeing a resurgence in people kind of buying up a lot of the weird Japanese RPGs and stuff. So I think people are kind of just covering their bases right now with this game and being like, look, I want a full RPG collection for the DS. I'm going to make sure I secure this game now because I see price trends on the DS and I'm going to pick up Luminous Arc now before things are too late. I don't hear too many people mention this series. I don't know if it's considered like a cult classic, but I don't hear too many people talking about Luminous Arc as a series. I think it's got its fan following, but I, I don't think this is going to be on the level of uh, cult status where you're going to see this game going for big bucks in the future. It doesn't seem rare enough. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about this one. I think if you're patient, you'll, you'll probably be able to get this game for 70, 80 bucks, right? Just be patient about it. Don't don't go crazy buying those those crazy expensive copies that are on there right now. Just wait. Just wait on this one. All right, let's jump into the next game. Next game is going to be Avalon Code. This one's a bit more interesting because this is a one-off game. No other games in the series for Avalon Code. And it does have a pretty unique take on the genre. And I think that's kind of important for the RPG genre. Games that tend to do something completely different that no other games in the genre have done, especially for RPGs, um, that's, that's pretty important, right? Let's make sure we're incomplete here. So let's take a look at the price history. Avalon Code has kind of always been in the 50, 40, 50 dollar realm. And of course, the 2020 spike, we have seen this game climb in about double in price. It's, it's, it's about over $100 right now. As, as you can see, the current trending prices for this, most copies are selling for about $100 or more. Now, this is a game I have in my collection. I bought this in a bargain bin way back in the day for like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, I still have yet to play it. But. The thing about Avalon Code that makes this game way different from other games in the genre is that you capture enemies with a book and then you like, from what I understand, you do a little puzzle, almost like inventory management in a Resident Evil game where you're like juggling the like Tetris pieces of trying to make your inventory nice and laid out so you can fit as much as you can. And you essentially take these Tetris pieces out of the enemies and say you defeat a fire, you capture a fire enemy, you can take out the fire element piece in the puzzle, place it into your weapon and get a fire weapon, right? That's that's an example of how this game works. And uh, it's a huge component of the game. I, I have read very mixed things on this from what I remember. And some people are definitely a fan of this sort of weird inventory management code system and some people are not they feel it really bogs down the game however it is unique there's nothing else quite out there like this from from what i'm aware of so let's take a look at current prices right now there are not a lot of these for sale um there are what there, there's one copy two copies one one north american copy that is complete available for sale which does not bode well for this game. Uh, that's usually the point where you're, where you should be a little worried if you're interested in picking this game up. Uh, should you buy this copy? No, this is above current market price, right? I think if you wait, if people use price charting, right? If they, if people actually use price charting for their game prices and they come on here um, and they look at the complete place, I could see somebody listing this for 100, 110. But the bad news, right? The most recent copy to sell in May. And I, I'm not, we're going to take a look to make sure this is very accurate. The most recent copy sold for 160, and there was a copy that sold for 150. So that's probably why this person is listing at 135, because they're like, well, somebody got 150, I might be able to get 135. I think it's very important for us in this instance to take a look at sold listings. 
All right, so, yep, there it is. Um, but this is in June, right? See, this is, this, I'm telling you guys, this is why you cannot trust price charting. They're always behind, right? May 20th, this copy just sold June 21st, June 16th. Where are all these June copies? See, this is why you can't always rely on price charting. It is always important to come in and check eBay itself for sold listings because they are very behind lately and it can be very, you know, um, in the current market right now, a month's time is huge. A game can shift dramatically in a month, so don't always go according to price charting. But anyway, let's take a look. Most recent copies, 150, 150, 150, 160. Okay, so Avalon Code, now taking a look at this, is no longer going to be a $100 game. This is certainly selling consistently. The last copy that apparently sold for around this price was like April, early May-ish. Uh, 107. This is a $150 game. Of course, the thing that all of you want to know, my take on it, will this game continue to go up? <sighs> this this is a hard one, right? Because I think a lot of this has to do with DS collectors going for full RPG collections. They want every RPG that's released on the DS, and this is a pretty scarce game. There's not a lot of these going around. Um... I couldn't I couldn't imagine this game getting too much more than like 200 225. I just can't see it just because it is a conflicting game with the reviews that I remember reading. It's not a game for everybody. I could see people buying this game, playing it, realizing it's really not for them and being like, "Listen, I'm going to get rid of this and get my money back." I can see that maybe happening. However, and this this is a true point. Uh, RPG collectors love their beautiful artwork, right? And the artwork on this game Let's see if we can get a closer look here. The artwork on this game is actually... Come on, give me the zoom. It's actually quite nice, right? This can be a death sentence for a price of an RPG. If this game had some janky, terrible box art, I don't even know if it would command quite as much. But it's colorful. It's very reminiscent of like an old school, like PlayStation 1 era kind of... Um, manual art or box art maybe not box art but you know what i'm saying right it's got that nice old school feel to it very very colorful very vibrant and i do think box art sometimes can play a factor into the price of rpgs and i think in this instance this is kind of a nice showpiece for people they look at that cover and it kind of gives them a feeling of what to maybe expect out of it and um i don't think that bodes well for this game i wish i had played it so i can offer a little bit more insight but uh, i would say Keep your eye peeled, right? If you are really interested in Avalon Code, I'd say consider, you know, consider picking up one now rather than waiting too long because it's it's pretty rare. Um, but, uh, hey, it's an expensive game, right? I think if you were looking into spending $150 on this game, I think you know, if, you don't need my recommendation, right? Like, if you're about to spend $150 on a game, I think you know if this is a game for you or not. I don't think you need me to tell you if this game is going to be going up or down. That's that's quite a lot of money for a DSRPG, so use your best judgment. All right, the last game we're going to be taking a look at from ASMR Gaming is, and this is a, this is a pretty interesting one as well, um... Project Zero Two. So this is a game that North America never got. It came out in Japan, PAL region. It came out in Australia. Um, but US, we never got it. So this is an interesting one because this is Fatal Frame 2 remade for the Wii. So, you know, we, we got Fatal Frame 2 on the, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, um, and then they got an exclusive Wii version. However, this isn't just a simple port. This is indeed a reworking of the game. They changed the camera angle so that it's no longer in a traditional survival horror type type view. You have a behind the shoulder view now that I'm assuming, you know, I haven't played it. I'm assuming you use the motion controls to maybe look around with the flashlight or at least have a heavy emphasis on waggle controls. They added in content to this game like it was a pretty um, valiant effort to remake this game for the Wii right based on what i know about it however <laughs> here's the thing survival horror fans are very stuck in the past of nostalgia right we i say we now because i do consider myself to be a big survival horror fan these days i did it back in the past but i am now i'm a huge survival horror fan now uh thanks to streaming them during october but 
We are very stuck in the past, right? We crave traditional survival horror with the tank controls. Well, maybe some of us crave tank controls, but we crave the static camera and maybe pre-rendered backgrounds and that sort of archaic sense of movement and inventory management and the sense of dread because you can't see what's around the corner because the camera angle is locking you into place, right? or what they choose to do with that traditional survival horror type camera that was made popular by games like Silent Hill. Whereas this version of the game kind of flips that on its head and gives you a completely new take and new look into how the game plays. So I think for Fatal Frame fans, they will always want the original version that they remember playing back in the day. This is more of a an appetizer, a side dish, right? You play this after you've played the original that you remember and love so much. And I think that kind of makes this a specialist sort of hardcore Project Zero Fatal Frame 2 game for collectors. So I don't think, and also because this is on Wii, not everybody's into motion controls and also not everybody's into the creative liberties that they took with remaking this game because they are, you know, we're stuck in the past of nostalgia with the genre. I think that is going to keep the price on this down into reasonable zones. However, never underestimate the survival horror genre. If we take a look at price charting, this game has been cheap for uh, quite a bit now. They only started tracking this back in 2019, but as you can see, it was, you know, 25, 30 bucks starting to get up there to the $60 realm, but you know, that's honestly not terrible when it comes to survival horror games. A 100% price increase at the start of 2020 is not too bad considering other horror game prices uh, and price increases. Now, I am looking at US eBay, but if we scroll down a little bit here, we can actually get a look at the um, the international listings a little bit. And it's uh, there's not a terrible amount of these right now. I'm not on like international eBay at the moment, but you know, you can see that there's uh, there's some copies sitting around here right now, maybe asking a little too much. I don't know what it'll show me if I go into sold. Let's find out. All right, so Japanese copy, 105, 120. Um, so, so, okay, here's something very important to keep in mind, actually. These copies that sold here ship to the US, right? So if somebody is really desperate and they live in the United States and they don't want to pay exceeding shipping prices or, you know, have trouble finding a seller that will ship to the United States in this current time, they will be more willing to pay more money because they can actually get a copy of it. Whereas these ones here, some of these may not be willing to ship to the United States and that kind of keeps the price in check a little bit more, right? A little hard for me to get a grasp on the prices of this one. However, let's just assume that the game is still going for around 60 to 80, $90, $100 or so. Will it go up much more than that? Well, Considering the news of the uh, the, the multi-platform revival of the Maiden of Blackwater, I think it was, right? The, 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 the Fatal Frame game that we never got here in the United States getting a new multi-platform. Well, I should say we had it as a digital release, but now it's getting revived, right? And re-released on all platforms. There's going to be new excitement drumming up for the series. It's been a while, unless you're excited about Pachinko Machines. So there will be renewed interest in this series. Um which I can see maybe driving the prices up this a little bit, but I don't think you're going to see a drastic price increase on this rate. I mean, look at the obs uh, Obscure the Aftermath on the Wii. Not many people going for that version because it's on the Wii. Look at uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Even though I think that is the better, superior version over the PS2 version, it's still a little bit cheaper than the PS2 version because not too many people want to deal with motion controls, even though I think that actually adds to that game's experience. In general, when a game, when a horror game is on the Wii, the counterparts, the Wii version, is usually always cheaper. So you should, fi you should factor that in for this game. But you also need to factor in that this will appear appeal to the hardcore fans because of how vastly different this plays to the original. But I think to a detriment because you have to remember the reviews on this initially were quite positive and quite high back in the day because, hey, we didn't get a lot of horror games on the Wii and getting something that was competent and you know able to be played and enjoyed was a pretty rare thing on the console. And uh, back then we were much more in our... Uh, honeymoon phase with motion controls and much more willing to accept them whereas now i think people are starting to move away from motion controls and waggle controls and we interface as we we move on so i think people are starting to distance themselves from that kind of control scheme whereas back when this released it was you know pretty positively received so where can i see the prices of this going being a survival horror game i can see this getting as high as maybe 150 160 i could not see this reaching the 200 dollars mark but you never know survival horror games uh, can 
can get crazy, right? You never know what's going to happen with them. But uh, do you need the panic buy this right now? I don't think so. Just keep your eyes peeled. If you're in the United States, that might be a little bit tricky, right? Trying to track down a copy. I just say take whatever you can get with reasonable shipping that comes to the United States. But I think you know if this game is for you or not, right? I think you know. I don't, I don't think you're going out of the, your way to get this if you haven't played the rest of the series before. So pretty small market uh, and also still pretty obscure, doomed to the Wii in certain regions. So anyway, guys, uh, that that is going to do it for me. We do have a few more Patreon requests. Um, but I'm going to be splitting it up into two different videos, so if you didn't see your game request in this video, it will be in the next one, which I want to get up before the end of June, so hopefully within the next week. Once again, thank you so much for the support on the series. If you missed the previous episodes, uh, I will be putting them up on the end screen right here, so you can check them out if you want. Uh, and as always, thank you for the support for the series, and thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.